Hi you two, we're going to do some more maths today, but at the moment I'm actually just out shopping for some new artwork. I've been so inspired by all the amazing art you've been sending through to us, so much so that I decided I needed some new paintings for my house. So let's go have a look around and see what we can find. These paintings are by an artist called Sam Toft. I really like the colourful style she uses, but I'm not sure if they're exactly what I'm looking for. I love the dramatic painting that the artist has created here by including the crashing waves and the cloudy sky, but 50 pounds is a little bit out of my price range. So let's go see what else there is. These flowers are quite pretty and only 99p. Could be a bargain. Oh wow, a Claude Monet painting. I know loads about him now, thanks to all of you. He's a French impressionist. I love his style. And look, it's being sold for only 28p. I've got some coins, but I'm not sure what I'll need. You're going to have to help me out here too. In today's maths lesson, we're going to be learning about money. Our learning objective is to recognise and combine different coins and notes. And we have three steps to success to help us get there. The first step is to recognise coins. So we're going to be looking at the different sizes and shapes of the coins, as well as what they're all worth. Next, we're going to use these coins to make different amounts in pence. And then finally, we're going to use the pound coins and the notes to make different amounts in pounds. Once we've done all that, I should be able to go back and buy my Monet painting. So let's go. Here are all the different coins I have. They have numbers and writing on them so I can see what they are, but I can also recognise them from the different colours, sizes and shapes. I have 1p, 10p, 5p, two pounds, one pound, 50p, 20p, and two p. And now I need to sort them. I sorted the coins by size from smallest to biggest. Does that mean that this five p coin, which is the smallest in size, is worth the least? Tell your grown up what you think. Pause the video now and try ordering the coins from smallest to biggest in terms of value. You could use real coins to help you if you've got any at home, or just grab a piece of paper and write down the order that the coins come in. Remember, you can look at the number on the coin to help you. Well done. So here are the coins from smallest to biggest in terms of value. First, we have the 1p coin. The letter P stands for pence. This is worth the least of all the coins. As you can see, it's a brown colour, which we call copper. Then we have 2p, this is also copper. This small silver one is 5p. Then there's 10p, 20p, 50p. Then we have a one pound coin. As we're no longer talking about pence, we use the pound sign. And finally, two pounds, the coin which is worth the most. A one pound coin is worth the same as 100 1p coins. How many 1p coins do you think you would need to make two pounds? As well as buying some art for my house, I'd also like to buy some art supplies. So I found this paintbrush being sold for 8p, but there's no such thing as an 8p coin. So what other coins could I use? We're going to look at the different combinations of coins we could use to make up 8p. I could pay for the paintbrush using eight 1p coins, but that's quite a lot of coins to be carrying in my pocket. I could also use four 2p coins. We know from learning about multiplication that four lots of two is eight. I could also combine 2p coins and 1p coins. For example, I could have three 2p's to make 6p and then add another two 1p coins to make eight. I don't just have to use coppers, I could also use a 5p coin, but I'd still need another 3p to have enough to buy my paintbrush. I could make that 3p using three 1p's, or a 2p and a 1p. As you can see, there are loads of different combinations, and these are all correct. However, it's often easier to use a smaller amount of coins to pay for things. So I've got my paintbrush and now I need some paint. I found this purple paint available for 12p, but again, there's no such thing as a 12p coin. So I would like you to pause the video and have a go at writing down all the different combinations of these coins you could use to make 12p. Excellent work here too. 
Now the last item I'd like to buy right now is this really cool green glitter glue, which is on sale for 23p. Again, write down all the combinations of coins you can think of to make up this amount. Before I go back to buy my painting, I should probably check how much money I have. In this purse, all the coins have the same value. They're all 10p coins, so we can count in our tens to see how much we have. Let's count them together. 10, 20, 30, 40. So we have 40p in total. Here we have coins worth different values, so we can't just count in our tens. We have a 50p, a 10p and a 1p, which we need to add together. You could always use your chips and peas to help you with this if you need to, but I'm going to use some mental math strategies. I'm going to start with my biggest number, which is the 50p, and add 10p. I know that the tens change and the units stay the same when I add 10, so I know that now I have 60p. And then I just need to add 1p, meaning I have 61p in total. Now it's your turn to have a go at adding these coins together at home. Great work, well done. Now you've got the hang of combining different coins to make pence, we're going to try using pounds. Here I have three one pound coins. How much money do I have altogether? That's right, I have three pounds. Hold on, so far we've only looked at coins. What's this strange piece of paper? How much do you think it's worth? Tell your grown-up now. Yes, it's a five pound note. So as well as our coins, we need to learn about notes too, which are worth more than coins. We have a five pound note, a 10 pound note, a 20 pound note, and you might even sometimes see a 50 pound note. It's easier to pay for more expensive things with notes rather than carrying lots of different coins. So let's look at this one. We have a combination of notes and coins. How much do we have in the purse? Pause the video now and count it up. Well done, there's a five pound note and two one pound coins. So we have seven pounds in total. Wow, you've done a brilliant job so far year two. Now it's time for some chili challenges that you can try at home. For chili one, I'd like you to find the totals of these coins and notes. As the coins or notes all have the same value in each question, you could try counting in ones, twos, tens, and then fives to help you. For Chile 2, find the total amount of money in each purse. Be careful as some of the coins and notes have different values. And Chile 3, Miss Lloyd has these coins. She thinks she has 12 pounds. Is she correct? Explain your answer. Well done for all your hard work in today's lesson about money. I think I now know which coins I could use to go back and buy my Monet painting. Now remember, I could use lots of different combinations, but I'm going to use 20p with a 5p coin to make 25, then a 2p coin, 27, and finally 1p, 28. I'm gonna go have a look now and make sure it hasn't already sold. As well as the chili challenges, you can also carry on practicing this at home by maybe sorting through any coins you might find, or you could also create your own fake money by using paper and different colors, or if you wanted to, you could even set up your own shop at home. As always, you can take pictures and send them to our year two email address, and we'd love to see what you're getting up to. Well done, see you soon, bye.